Welcome to Earl Stewart on Cars. Leasing is being pushed very heavily by almost all car dealers. And the reason for this is that it's easier to make a higher profit from the customer on a lease. Leasing doesn't cost you more as long as you know what you need to do and be careful of. Unfortunately, with leasing, there's a lot more that you have to be careful of. I'll tick off just a few from the very beginning when you go into a lease a car, I should say. You still have to be careful about a dealer fee because virtually all dealers include the dealer fee, add the dealer fee to the leasing price of the car. Now, there's something new that you don't have when you purchase a car. It's called the lease acquisition fee. This is something the lease company charges, and they split the profit with the dealer. So it's it's like a semi-dealer fees. And then, in addition to that, you have the upfront fees that are usually hidden. And the advertisements you see on leases, without exception, have something called a cap cost reduction. That's abbreviation for capital cost reduction. And that's just a fancy name to confuse you, really, uh, for down payment. They require a down payment on virtually every lease ad you you see or hear. This is to lower the perceived monthly payment, but your monthly payment is really much higher if you don't have to come out of pocket two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars in the fine print. You never know. Now, here's another hidden danger that is the cost for excess mileage. If you're an average driver, you drive fifteen thousand miles a year. Most leases have like a 10,000 mile per year cap. The Mercedes dealers were advertising leases with only a 7,500 mile annual cap. If you go over the cap in any one year, they charge you up to 25 cents a mile. When you turn your car in, you're responsible for thousands of dollars in excess mileage charge. If you're a high mileage driver, you might not want to lease. But if you are a high mileage driver and you do want to lease, you can factor in your excess mileage up front. That way you know what you're getting into. There's no sense in getting a good low lease payment for say $250 a month, which is what you wanted. And then three years later, you find out you owe the leasing company uh, three or 4,000 miles for excess mileage. So be very careful And if you're a high mileage driver. Now, when you turn your car in, there's something called a lease disposition fee. This is just a gotcha. It's a dealer fee by the leasing company. Uh, they get you coming with a lease acquisition fee, and they get you going with a lease disposition fee. This is typically $350, $400, and uh, I didn't mention the cost of the lease acquisition fee. This is typically, typically around eight or $900. And as the TV commercials say, wait, there's more, because perhaps the biggest danger with a lease is the judgment by the leasing company that your car was returned with above average normal wear and tear. This is largely subjective on the part of the leasing company. This means that your tires uh, don't have enough tread. This means that you have a stain on the upholstery. Uh, this means that you might have a, a little ding or scratch or dent. You know, what is a normal wear and tear ding or dent? I mean, when you're in the parking lot at a, at a local mall and someone opens the door and scrapes your door, is that normal wear and tear? In my vocabulary, that's normal wear and tear. But it doesn't matter what's in your vocabulary or my vocabulary. It's what's in the leasing company's vocabulary. Very subjective. I advise you, if you get hit with a large, above normal wear and tear charge by your leasing company, fight it. Argue. I've been very uh, successful in many cases with my customers being their advocate going back and arguing with the leasing company that they're being unreasonable. Now, one another way to protect yourself against this unreasonable wear and tear is to take a picture of your car. Be sure you go over your car when you return it with a salesperson or whomever is checking your car in. Be sure he signs off on a piece of paper and be sure that any notice of any damage is okayed and approved by you. In addition to that, take your digital camera, your, your smartphone, take a picture of the tires, take a picture of the uh, outside of the car and the inside of the car so that you have evidence. Remember, when you drop a car off at a dealership, which is typical, you don't know when that car is going to get back to the leasing company. Many times those cars sit on a dealership's property for weeks or even months before the leasing company picks them up. 
who knows who's driving your car, especially if you have a full tank of gas. A salesman picks up the car, drives it for six weeks. Leasing company doesn't know the car's back yet. And maybe he has an accident. Maybe uh, wears the tread on your tires. Maybe stains the upholstery. And you get charged for that. Be sure you have documentation that the car was checked and that what condition that was when you left it with the dealer. So with all those things said, leasing can still be a good uh, way to drive a car, and you just have to be very, very careful. I hesitate to remain leasing for all I just discussed. It is really, it can be a nightmare unless you're a very educated, careful consumer.